Hello, I'm Shirley and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about the Calathea plants. Calathea plants are rather tender plants in my mind. You, you bring them home, they look absolutely lovely and then within a couple of weeks or so things start to go slightly wrong. I've had this myself many times so I thought I'd do a video on how I've solved the problem for myself with my plants. I'm going to talk about light, positioning, soil requirements, leaf, uh, things to do with the leaves and above all roots. And so if we go through a few of those things I think it might actually help you to save and keep your calatheas. <laughs> If you'd like to like and subscribe, if you enjoy the video, I um, post once a week. If you've had some problems with your calatheas, then you are ready to hear any little nuggets of information that I may have for you because, you know, I almost gave up buying any more calatheas because I had so many problems and I really didn't know what to do. So here I have a beautiful white fusion. Oops, Daisy, a bit of water in there, I didn't realize. She's absolutely lovely. Now she is the star of the show in my mind, although I have had a couple of others that I've had to fix and, and help. Um, I had her and oh, she was so grand. She was this big. She was just beautiful, I mean. I put her by the window, um, we had some very um, light net and that stopped you know the, the, the harshest sunshine on the leaves because I quickly realised she did not like too much sunshine. She actually comes from Brazil, most of these calthea plants come from Brazil. Um, my beautiful uh, snake plant here. Um, my uh, rattlesnake, he comes from Brazil, um, and most of them do. And um, they like a shady spot. They don't want too much harsh sunlight. So that's your first concern. Uh, if you put them too far away from the window, that won't help. They have to have light, but it's mottled light. Um, and what happened to me was she suddenly started to develop brown on her leaves. She started to go limp. She started to just leaf drop. Um, I mean, it was so fast, the decline, that it was absolutely staggering. Um, life's going on, I'm having to do other things. I'm going out, I'm doing things, working. I'm looking again, oh my goodness, she's just not improving. More water, more water. And this is what you tend to do. Um, no, that is not the answer. More water is not the answer. Now what they do is your plants breathe um, carbon dioxide but they also breathe some oxygen and they breathe through little holes like little pores, microscopic, in the backs of their leaves, all of them, every plant that you see. Um, they take in the oxygen, they take in the carbon monoxide and what they need. Um, but they don't just breathe through their leaves, they breathe through their roots, if you just didn't know that. I always thought that the roots sucked up the nutrients and the moisture and all of this, but no, that's not all they do. They breathe through the tips of, they have terribly fine little hairs on the ends of the tips of their roots in the soil. And this is the case with all plants, but especially the calatheas tend to be very sensitive. And if you just keep watering, you are in effect, you are suffocating them. You're almost drowning them, but you're actually suffocating them. Everyone thinks too much water, I'm drowning them because it's common sense, but you're actually suffocating them they can't breathe they need to breathe from the leaves and from the roots now the way to solve that problem is to 
first of all, get them out of the soil that they're in. You can reuse the soil if you want to, but you've got to dry it out, literally dry it out. So take your plant, rinse her off, all her roots off, lie her down, dab her dry with a paper towel, and then just leave her for four hours or so. And if that soil that she used isn't dry, then just discard it. Get some fresh. And what you want is you want to use three quarters of the soil to about one quarter of perlite. You can use some other types, but I always use the perlite. Mix that in really, really well. Um, if you think you haven't put enough perlite in, don't worry, put a bit more in. It really isn't going to hurt them because they need the air pockets between the little bits of damp soil and dry perlite. So it acts as a buffer, creating little holes around um, each of the perlite and then in turn around those roots. And therefore then you will see a vast difference. It may take a few days, it could take a week before you actually notice that the leaves are starting to lift. Don't take all the leaves off, just take the worst off. Leave some that's got a bit of brown on them but quite a bit of the green. They're variegated remember, they need the green um, to photosynthesize. So make sure that you don't take everything off. You can always trim later as they start to grow. And I am putting some photos down here so you will be able to see how mine went to virtually death's door to then what you see here now. She is actually, it almost looks to me as if she's two plants in this pot. She seems to be two bunches, so I'm really happy about it. She's been like this now growing for a good few months, um, but she's doing really well. She's not growing that fast, but she is growing fairly quickly and she's definitely okay. Um, now I had to do the same thing with this little chap, Pinstripe. She was only a small plant when I bought her, but bigger than this. And, um, you know, I buy her, I think everything's fine, I've just bought her, she's come from, you know, the greenhouse, what have you. No, same thing happened again. Uh, brown on the edges, which is a sure sign, it probably is something to do with the roots. If they're yellowing, it tends to mean you've just overwatered them or underwatered them. Um, but brown, if they go brown, if it's just on the edges, it's generally the atmosphere, the humidity in your room. Um, but if it goes brown a bit more than that, a bit more than the edges, then you know it's got something to do with the roots. But I can tell you quite clearly, when it comes to calpheas, the best thing you can do, get them home give them a day or two and then get them out of that soil. Do the same thing, give them a rinse, dry out the soil. If it's not dry enough, then get some fresh from home. Do your mix, three quarters soil, quarter perlite or a little bit more. And make sure you can actually see some of that perlite. Give it a good stir. Plant your plant. Don't water her immediately. Give her overnight and then just give her a trickle. Of water. Remember she has had too much water on those roots. She has had not enough air for those roots. So just let her sit for 24 hours and then just give her a trickle. Then give her a couple of days, then give her a trickle of water again. Don't overdo it, don't underdo it. But you will have to nurse them just a little bit and keep them out of direct sun. I feed mine um, some worm castings, which I mix into the soil, um, and um, some fish emulsion. You can feed them any of the houseplant food that you want to feed them, but do it in moderation. You can either do it a little bit every, say, once a week when you give them their general watering. You can just add a tiny little drop in, or you can just Give them a trickle midweek if it's like really warm water, um, warm temperatures, you know, you're going through spring, summer, 
uh, warm days in autumn or you've had your radiators on too high in the summer because in the winter because that can be just as bad I mean your radiators are just drying the air in the room now when it comes to the air in the room the humidity I find the best place is your kitchen it's your kitchen or your bathroom because you've got water taps you know being used all the time so you've got this air coming out of the drains even and this this water going into the air all the time so your leaves are always getting a little bit um don't mist with rain water you can mist with rain water if it works but my misters clog up with rain water so i tend to mist um only my normal plants you know the other types of plants with ordinary water tap water um, or filtered water is fine but rain water is what your calthias really need your other plants are hardier they can cope but the calatheas really need rain water so if you haven't got a rain water holder outside you could just put some tubs out but i would say that if you leave them say you have a rainfall um, I would the next day or the day after if you can do it then I would get it I would put it through some kind of sieve put it in a bottle store it in a cool cold darkish place um, uh, and use it if you leave it outside insects are going to get in birds will go in for a bath and have a drink and put god knows what in it um, you know it, this is what happens so my advice is if you mist mist with rain water because tap water has chemicals has chlorine fluoride whatever else you might have in your your tap water it's just not going to work with the calatheas so don't do it if you're going to miss them miss them with rain water but as i say some of these misters they can't take the rain water even though they're silk and you could try filtered water but if you see any of the browning starting again don't do it it's just not worth it she has been in the kitchen no misting whatsoever for almost a year um, she's been recovering for six or eight months not a problem not a problem at all just don't miss them with tap water and don't give them tap water give them rain water many of us don't have access to rain water it could be too difficult for you to get so what you could do is try this i've used some water conditioner and so far i found that it's okay for the calatheas um, this is the one i've been using that is your secret you want the nuggets that's the secret you've got to look after those roots have to have a mixture of something dry like perlite with the soil so you get your air pockets for those furry tips on those roots and you want um rain water which has all the nourishment that she needs with no chlorine harsh chemicals too much salt all that sort of salt stuff that's in our tap water now a lot of the other plants are fine with that so don't worry but your calatheas and I also use my marantas I don't give them uh, tap water. Um, now I had a similar problem with my Macchiana who also comes from Brazil. They're tropical plants basically they love the humidity in the air the sunshine when it's mottled sunshine um, and they grow really well I mean these plants can have huge leaves so they can be really big but I bought her when she was very small um, and about the same time as I bought her I bought my white fusion and they had the same problem around about the same time and oh panic panic anyway I, I looked after them but she was different because under her leaves was a sticky gooey mess it was absolutely unpleasant to touch the leaves and a lot of that was because of the roots suffering now it can be that you have some kind of spider mite or some kind of infestation so you will have to um, you know check it out yourself a little bit 
but um, I did find for me it wasn't that it was literally the roots she couldn't breathe she couldn't cool down she was suffering and she was trying to recreate her own moisture from underneath her own leaves so what I had to do was remove this sticky enough stickiness because it was also clogging up the little pores that breathe in the air and breathe out um, the air so what you have to do is take the teeniest amount of um, dish soap with quite a bit of water and some tissue and just wipe off the underneath when you think you've got it off you can just use plain water and wipe that off use your rain water again um, always use rainwater whenever you can on your leaves when you're cleaning your surface leaves as well the dust you want that off as well because that helps the leaves these plants of ours are absolutely totally amazing they're so amazing their whole system of survival I just find it really amazing trying to remember all the different things is difficult for me though um, but the roots are so important they are actually organs for the plant so it's really important that you do use this perlite for your calpheas and look at me I mean from such a youngish plant that died down to virtually nothing look what she is now she's doing so well and so happy so I saved my macchiana I saved my white fusion I also had to save my medallion um, it was such a sad story um, but I am saving her she's a working process when I get her into a better state then I may well do another video on her alone she is quite a story in, in itself um, my uh, rattlesnake is hardier she's a calathea as well but she's hardier the most I've had from her is a little brown on the ends of some of her leaves but most of her leaves as you can see are fine I've had her for perhaps two years now she's growing she was very small when I bought her look at her now leaves and everything even though I didn't have a problem with her I changed her soil because once I understood my basic problem uh, I made sure that all of my calatheas had the perlite and I tend to put it now with most of my plants as well because why not put it with the other plants they all need to breathe don't they but your calatheas will suffer if they're not treated this way that's the way I see it anyway so she is absolutely beautiful she's done really well she's quite hardy she is actually in the living room all the other plants the calatheas they have to go into my kitchen otherwise they just they just get lots of brown edges all around the leaves and they're not happy. Um, they don't die off because of the soil, but they do, you know, suffer. So, um, but she, she always looked okay. I mean, she's just got this one leaf now that's a bit brown here, but um, I don't think that's too bad. <laughs> I love her. I love to look at her in the living room. If I ever see that she's really suffering, I'll move her into the kitchen. But, um, but I'm quite happy the way she is so there we go so I think I've covered everything watering light positioning um, by the windows um, the very important thing about how your roots and leaves breathe and how this is so important um, and uh, feeding I think I've covered that as well and also this condition that can sometimes come about the stickiness don't be afraid of it wipe it off get rid of it if you see it's insects then it's another thing you have to look for something to treat the insects but if you don't see any insects and you've had a lot of wilting and uh, a lot of leaf fall um, then assume it's the roots again do something about it change the soil if it's too wet don't don't water it for a few weeks let it actually dry right out or get it out and do what I've said before dry it out on a table top um, you know rinse it let it dry out so that's what I've been doing that's how I've saved my calatheas and you can see how well she's doing now she's absolutely wonderful um, apparently she's one of the rare calatheas 
didn't know that and she's so beautiful she has a bit of pink in her leaves as well as she's growing her leaves so they turn a little pink and she's really quite a lovely plant and I'm really pleased about this little baby here because she suffered she was quite beautiful she's actually now since I've changed her and done all the right things she's now producing two new baby shoots just here and here and she's growing really well so I'm really happy with her as well so anyway that's all I've got time for today that's all I wanted to say really um, I might do uh, a video on propagating with the um, lemon lime and the marantas because that's a really nice uh, little thing that I've been doing just recently and that's been working really well so I might do some propagating of various plants um, so anyway I hope you've enjoyed that I hope you could like and subscribe if you've enjoyed some of this information and it's going to help you with your plants and um, bye for now.